Hi guys, Virginia here and I'm back with a new 12x12 process video for Confessions of a Paper Edit Cut Files. I totally did not get a process video out last week. It was just life, just, yeah, just got in the way. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'm using a cut file from, uh, it's the Builder Painting Cut File from the shop. I just pinched the paintbrushes from it, I didn't pinch it, I used the paintbrushes from it. <laughs> I've cut the handles of the paintbrushes out on um, some craft cardstock and then I'm just using some, um, I think it's vintage ink, uh, distress ink um, and I've got a little blending brush here and I'm just um, just kind of blending it on the edges just to give a, bit, a little bit of depth to that craft cardstock um, and make the handles look a little bit uh, uh, more interesting, <laughs> I guess, uh, other than just um, flat craft colour. So there we go. So you can see the difference there. They look heaps better. Um, and then I've gone ahead and I've cut the the um, middle bit of the paintbrush, the metal bit that kind of holds all those brushes together. I've cut that out of gold uh, foiled cardstock. And then I've cut, obviously, the brushes, the brush part out of um, some black cardstock. So I cut that a wee while ago. And I think I've cut mm, six six I think. Um, I definitely had this in mind uh, for a specific pattern paper from the Vicky Boot and Sweet Rush collection. Um, it was six paintbrushes, yeah. So I did go ahead and um, measure the um, the strips of the colour on the pattern paper so that would dictate how thick I wanted my um, paintbrushes so I've cut them accordingly to the right size and now I've just got like this little pointy tool I use this to get my um, it's actually a quilling tool but it's got a sharp point on it um, I use it to get dies out of my dies or die cuts out of my dies <laughs> um, but I'm just using it on a ruler and I'm scoring that um, that gold cardstock just to kind of give you some lines as though it's kind of been crimped there again just to give the cut file a little bit more life um, yeah and then I'm going to go ahead and glue those three pieces together and you get a fun little paintbrush in the end I love this cut file you can just do so much with it so there we go that's the pattern paper that I was um, wanting to use I'm going to go ahead and cut the branding strip off I'm not going to use the kind of grid lined portion of it I just want that color um, those colored strips and again I measured each kind of uh, the width of each of those um, strips of colour so that I could work out how thick I wanted those brushes. Now this is where I get a little bit stuck and I'm like, oh, I don't know how I want to do this. Um, I was going to just cut it off and then I thought, no, I want a little bit of texture. And then I thought, well, what if I could mirror this colour on the other side? So that's what I go ahead and do. And I cut a strip off and I'm going to lay my paintbrushes against that. And then I'm going to tear the rest of it off so I get a real kind of um, worn edge and a bit of that, um, the core of the card showing through. I'm just tidying it up. There's a little bit, a few areas with some excessive white on it. Okay, so I've got two strips of pattern paper. One's going to go to the left. And I just need to make sure that I <laughs> mirror them properly so that I don't have um, a pink matching against a, like a mint colour. And there we go. All my paintbrushes are going to stack here along this. And I'm going to kind of stagger them. I don't want them all in a perfectly straight line because that's a little bit boring. And then I've got four photos. I only end up using three. One of them I decided I didn't need. But I want to break up that white cardstock that I've got in the background. So I'm just looking through my Distress inks, my little mini cubes, and pulling out some colours that I think will work. So I, are they the, you'll be able to see it better than me. I've either got spun sugar or worn lipstick up the top. Maybe carved pumpkin. Uh, I think Mermaid Lagoon. I think we've got picked raspberry down the bottom. I think the green down the bottom is salvaged patina. And then we've got um, twisted citron. Uh, is that green. And I'm just looking through my Vicky Burton stencils. I knew that there was a really cool floral that I um, had recently purchased. So I'm going to go ahead and use that one. I think it's from the Sweet Rush collection. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of ink blending. So I grab my blending brushes. So I find them <clears throat> and a paper towel and just go ahead and do a little bit of blending. So I'm just referencing those colours that are on the um, left hand side as to how much 
of each to put down into like where to take it to and I don't mind if I get to like the orange and it's going to blend with the pink a little bit that's fine obviously blue and orange you don't want to blend together that's going to make mud <laughs> um, so you just got to be a little bit mindful when you do that um, so just trying to bring it down to where I need it <clears throat> okay onto my blue I'm just cleaning my brushes a little bit before I go through So just bringing that colour in. Again, try not to blend too much with that orange. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it a bit of a wipe off. Because obviously I'm bringing in green and pink and um, that other light blue colour. So I don't want to blend that into my inks. So just pop that back in place. And start off with my twisted my twisted citron. <laughs> um, and just blend a little bit of the flowers there. And then I come in with my, just lining that up again, picked raspberry. And then lastly, my salvage patina. I'm pretty sure it's salvage patina. Just lining up my stencil again. There we go. I love what this adds to the background. Okay, so we've got a nice little kind of rainbow of floral design kind of going down that right hand side of the page. Again, I'll just clean off my stencil and then I can dry that and pop it away, pop my ink cubes away. I can um, just clean up my mess a little bit. And this is where I thought, oh, I wonder if I kind of do away with that and I just have this. <laughs> Um, no, I go back to my original idea. I like that. Should have just stuck with it. It doesn't hurt to try, I think, because you, you never know. You really don't. I mean, anything could just kind of uh, change your mind. Something could look just a little bit better. But there we go. Okay, happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and adhere down these um, pattern paper strips to my white cardstock. So I know that they are not going anywhere. And I'm going to go ahead and pop up all of my paintbrushes on some adhesive foam. And then I can go ahead and pop them back in place now. So again, popping them down so that they're all staggered, not all in a perfect line. There we go. And I've got four photos, like I said, I'm only going to use three of them. One of them I didn't particularly want to use. It kind of didn't go with the flow of the other photos. So I skipped that one. That's okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and adhere my paintbrushes down because I know that they're not going anywhere. And I don't want them to be shuffling around and moving out of place when I'm trying to put my embellishments in my photos. Um, in place, so I just go ahead and quickly adhere them down with some ATG. Okay, super fun. I'm loving this already. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to mount my photos on um, a layer of pattern paper. I'm going to go with, I think I do, I end up going with black. When I get there, there we go. There's a nice dark uh, black kind of print on the back of that rainbow so I'll just go ahead and mount my photos on that just leave a really thin border trim them out and just rough up the edges with my little paper distressor I really love that stencil work on the um, right hand side. It looks really cool. <laughs> so the photos, I didn't say what they were. They were um, Eddie's got um, some uh, little fluffies. We call them fluffies. <laughs> and I was showing her what we did. This is what this is what we did growing up when we were kids, and we would go and stay out at the beach with my grandparents and the rest of our extended family. We would get these. Um, uh, 
they're like little fluffy heads off the grass. Um, the grass the grass type is called hare's tail, and um, we would often like we would take our felt pens and stuff out with us, um, to the beach. But um, obviously we'd need to come up with things to do. This was back in the eighties, <laughs> early nineties, and um, down in water. Yeah, um, and yeah, we'd have our felt pens with us and thinking of stuff to do. We would go and pick these um, hare's tail um, from around the paddocks and around the beach because it's like it's kind of like beach grass. It grows out near the coast, um, and uh, we would break apart our felt pens and we would put um, like the inner fluffy like ink bit in water and colour the water and um, then we would dunk these hare's tail, the heads of the hare's tail in it and colour them and we would make these big bunches of these really bright colourful um, hare's tail things and we'd try to sell them, we'd also paint rocks and things <laughs> um, but it's just, um, Eddie had never done it before, she'd never seen it, she didn't know what I was talking about, and I've got a bunch at home, because obviously we're back in Hawke's Bay, where I used to live, and I grew up, and we've been out to the beach, where I spent so much of my time, or my summers, when I was a child, um, I've managed to get a nice little collection of this hare's tail, and it's just kind of sitting in my craft room, in a vase, it just, it just brings back so many happy memories for me. And um, I wanted to share one of those memories with her. So I filled up some little containers with um, water and I just did food colouring. Um, I didn't want Eddie to just draw her felt pens. <laughs> um, and that made food colouring easy. And I just showed her what to do just to kind of like dunk these little uh, things in the food colouring. She absolutely loved it. And then we hung them up on the clothes, uh, clothes horse to dry out in the sun and she ended up with this nice little bunch of colourful hare's tail. And it was just, it was a really nice thing to kind of share with her. Um, the memories of me doing that when I was a child and showing her how to do it. Um, yeah, so that's what this, I felt like this collection, Sweet Rush collection would go really, really well with that. So while I was rambling on about the, <laughs> the photos, I've kind of embellished the page. I've got some fussy cut florals that I've, I've used and then I brought in some die cuts and those layered hearts and then some other little bits and pieces. This, this collection is just such a fun one to use. It's so bright and vibrant and colourful and um, perfect for photos like this. So I'm just going to work my way through gluing everything down. Um, I don't make you watch at all. Everyone knows how to glue things down, don't they? <laughs> um, yeah, and just, yeah, I really love this one. This was really fun. I love how the photos are kind of stacked in that kind of vertical line. Down those paintbrushes. So much colour. And then there's some sprinklings of bits and pieces. So, yeah. Just adding a bit of foam behind each of those bits and pieces just to help support them. And then I just kind of work my way through gluing everything else down on the page. I thought I'd cut most of this out. There we go. <laughs> I cut the rest out. <clears throat> After that, that's pretty much it for my layout. Um, it came together super quickly. I had this kind of idea on my head and um, I think it came out better than what was in my head. So super happy with it. Um, the links to the Confessions of a Paper Addict Facebook group and shop are in the description box below. And I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, bye guys.